Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games, and welcome back to part 4 of my American Union State Campaign here in Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich 0.8. And it's morning again in America, because not only is Huey Long now the winner of the American Civil War, Second American Civil War, but the hot fix has come in, so his ghost will no longer haunt me. Uh, there was a really, basically there was a bug, some of you may know what I'm talking about, where uh, Huey would continuously drain popularity from the other two branches that you can go down as the American Union State, and basically made them impossible to play. But now... Uh, it goes from impossible to just a little bit hard. We've got zero war support, zero stability, uh, overwhelming socialist resistance wall. And also, this is pretty cool. I'm going to show you guys this as we deal with it. But the the resistance uh, little localization, it actually changes every time you reduce it. So right now we're dealing with overwhelming federalist resistance. While you have won the war against the federal government, we have not won the minds of its inhabitants. Federal terrorists attack railroads and factories and indiscriminately kill our loyal soldiers and policemen. Also overwhelming socialist uh, resistance, which basically just says the same thing. Uh, but it's going to change as we work on it. Now, first thing that Huey wants to do is we need to establish our place in the world. So he's going to create a new Monroe Doctrine. American power naturally radiates both south and north, northwards and east into Europe, southwards to Latin America. Is the long-fought spirit of our hemisphere worth preserving, or is it time to reposition ourselves and rewrite foreign policy? Okay, now we do have a decent amount of political power, but I think I want to hold on to it for right now, because I'm sure going to have to be spending a lot of it later. As far as the research slots go, we are working on that tank, and actually, you know what, that's probably going to be the one thing I'll allow myself is no 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 i was i was gonna pick up the chrysler but never mind uh never mind uh what i'm instead gonna do is let's it's too early to take the industry so let's just pick up the computing machine or no let's pick up the armored spearhead and just hit five speed we're also gonna start doing a bit of reorganizing down here with our army all right, lots of fun events popping up here. Black No More by George, and I and I do plan to read all these events. They are, they're very detailed, and that's great. Black No More by Ger George Schuyler. The imaginations and political opinions of Americans were piqued when Black No More appeared on bookshelves. The book, a science fiction, is a science fiction about a scientist that invents a machine gun that can turn a black man white. This invention turns society upside down and challenges ideas on race and the one-drop principle. The science fiction, with the revelation that all the characters, both white and black, are mixed race and the entire principle of racial supremacy, collapses. While there were concerns that the book would be censored due to its veiled attacks against both white supremacists and black leaders, it appears that Huey Long enjoys the book. Well, as long as it doesn't offend me, plus five political power. Wow, what a nice open free society. The American Legion appointment. We're going to bring it into that. With the end of the Civil War comes a vacancy in the ever-important position of the American Legion's national commander. The last title holder, Smedley Butler, had foolishly sided with the syndicalists. Whomever taken this position will symbolically represent the veterans of the United States military and society, and thus our choice is important. The most common name floated up is General George Mosley, though his anti-Semitism does dissuade some from his nomination. Huey Long also believes that his friend and ally, Fox Connor, whom introduced Patton to Huey's cause, should have the position. Pelly's name has been placed into our desk several times, despite the door being locked. Yeah, I've read that, I've read that sentence a few times, and it's still so funny to me. Uh, whom shall be appointed? So, a lot of things I like here. First off, it sets up Mosley and his personality. I also really appreciate that they talk about Fox Connor, because then that explains why Patton is fighting for the American Union state. Because he was born in California, and in theory, he should default to the federal government otherwise, if he doesn't join the PSA or the federal government. Like, like why would he not be in one of those? And Because his friend, Fox Connor, uh, has uh, had convinced him to fight for Huey. Anyway, we're going to be appointing Pelly. Uh, the man who walks through walls. Oh, that reminds me. So now we're talking about appointments. I did not, and, and forgive me for this, but somebody brought it up in the comments, and I really should have done it, but I, I did not actually explain who these members of the military staff were who I was appointing during the war. I'm just going to give you a super abridged version. Arthur Bell here was the Grand Dragon of the KKK based in New Jersey. That's right, I did say New Jersey. Anybody who said, wait, where is he? Yeah, New Jersey's way up here. Anybody who says the KKK was just a southern thing, yeah, sure, it started in the south, but it did not end there. Uh, and they're a fool if they think otherwise. All right, then we've got Edmund Emerson Jr. So this guy was the founder of the Society of American Friends of Germany and actually met Hitler in 1934. 
uh, we're talking about in our original timeline, Hitler's long dead by 1934 in this timeline. Uh, but he was also expelled from several countries for being a German spy. Then there is George Lincoln Rockwell, straight up founder of the American Nazi Party. So that's uh, those who those people were who I appointed. So these are the men who are surrounding the, the ever so innocent Huey Long right now. Was there? Uh, oh yeah. So we were gonna keep organizing though. So let's pull the armor over here. Any more tanks? We're just gonna convert all these infantry divisions. Let's get a couple more queued up. All right. Syndicalists are bombing. Uh, a couple, couple, couple things are going on right now. <clears throat> All right, first off, the business plot has been exposed. Pelly has come rushing to Huey Long, interrupting one of his meetings as he delivers an important message for the Kingfish. It seems that the War Powers Committee has been looking to the American Legion to try and get support to overthrow him. The news first makes the room fall silent, and then anger from Long, who orders the arrest of all the traitors to America. The gang, now known as the business plot, is due to appear at trial shortly. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Um, or, yeah, let's just do that now. Okay, a special session of Congress. A rapid-fire session of Congress under Huey Long has been able to pass several enabling acts thus far. Exhausted by dictating President Long's orders, allies within the Prohibition Party and old Democrats have come today to deliver a more radical proposition for their constituents. Barrel rolled together is a bill for veteran back pay and a proposal for the Prohibition Amendment. Prohibition is popular with conservative Protestants in the South, but is seen as tyrannical by the so-called wet states in the North and West. Unfortunately, the big tent politics of the AFP mean these bills can only pass together or not at all. The final decision lies with Huey Long. So he is going, so if we do pass the bill, we'll lose political power, increase training time, but recovery rate will increase, presumably because the soldiers aren't hung over as much or something. I don't know. Uh, but we will not pass these bills. I will not stand for pork. Try to attach free, try, try to attach free riders and stuff. So here we go, the Night of the Long Knives, obviously a reference to um, you know, Germany's Night of the Long Knives. So uh, after a particularly fiery night of speeches at the Silver Legion's new capital city outpost, William Dudley Pelly has rallied his legion in favor of murder. Among his conspirators are now close confidants of President Long, who had deserted Long after he vetoed Prohibition and the, president, and the, the, the Veterans Bill. These new traders uh, provided the crucial passes to get past the minimum security and allow the Silver Legion to execute a coup. A cadre of Silver Legion assassins, assassins swooped into the presidential mansion and seized Huey Long. After a brief mock trial where he is found guilty of tyranny and attempting to infiltrate syndicalism into America, Huey Long is shot that very night. William Dudley Pelly has announced to a cautious and guarded crowd that he will guide the country, making sure that syndicalism is rooted out of the country. The Silver Legion has already begun occupying Congress. To hell with traitors. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about this Night of the Long Knives. Uh, so I've, I've I've been studying up on a lot of these characters in Kaiserreich since the, the the new update, including eventually I hope to do a Totalist America run where I'm going to be either Browder or Foster. I'm pretty sure who I'm going to play, but um, anyway. So this whole Night of the Long Knives incident and, and uh, Huey being assassinated. And forgive me if I talked about this already in a different episode because I. I think I only talked about it in the one that I ended up not doing because of the bug. I ended up not putting that episode out. Anyway, so Earl Browder, who's one of the t potential totalist leaders of the Commonwealth of America, he talked about when uh, Huey Long, there's a whole chapter dedicated to Huey Long and his assassination. And he, he talks about how, look, Huey Long seemed to have kind of socialist values, so maybe we would have liked him, but he probably would have been authoritarian kind of tough to say i think this is in his book what is communism by the way i don't i need to double check i checked out a couple of them from my library anyway and so he says but even though us communists I mean, speaking from his own point of view probably would not have liked Huey long the fact that he was assassinated is really dangerous for our society and he compares it to the night of the long knives that happens in germany because he was saying look you didn't have to like ernst to, to know that Hitler having him killed was a bad thing. Uh, so I just thought that was so interesting that somebody who's like the leader of the Communist Party of America is saying, I may not have liked Huey, but him being assassinated reeks of uh, fascism. Uh, anyway, le I guess, you know, everybody loves Huey it, it, in some degree. Uh, so anyway, we're going to put Hodges here. He was the... I'll talk more about him later when we actually go to war, but he was basically he was the commander of the first army, U.S. first army during World War II. But he's going to be our tank guy, 
And Hood Simpson here is going to be our infantry guy. And let's get him training up some of these green divisions that used to be militiamen. Taking out, of course, the ones that are already trained up. All right, so we got these continuously coming out. We got a couple of those out there. And can we set up 24? Uh, no, we're not allowed to, but that's something. We don't have much manpower right now because we have very little in the way of cores, but of course I'll fix that eventually. All right, let's do something like that. Whoops, first armored army. There we go. Sweet. Too sweet. Okay, there we go. Terrific. Maybe not the pink for Patton. <laughs> Let's give him like a like a dark green. There we go. Okay, so Pelly is now in charge. They've also fixed his uh, typo in his name. <clears throat> but we're gonna yeah now now this is where the fun begins we are now the commonwealth of america of course we still have a long way to go we have to recover from the civil war we got to finish up this monroe doctrine thing but as soon as we're done with that we're going to start working on his path uh, we are already automatically bypassed yeah my eyes have seen the glory it took many americans by surprise to hear huey long's confession of being a syndicalist broadcast that night the initial backlash could have ended the brief revolution had the Silver Legion faltered. Thankfully, the American Legion and Prohibition Party had deserted long after his betrayal of his promises. This is the beginning of a new America. All right, first things first. Silver Legion. The Silver Legion is, un is currently the unofficial head of the American Legion, with propaganda delivered slowly through agents. This has led to pockets of dissent in some of American Legion outposts. We must identify these dissidents and redistribute them to far-flung outposts in order to minimize their potential. So this is going to increase my war support as well as my recovery rate. So that's cool. All right, now we got a little bit of political power that I don't, I don't really have anything to spend it on. We could solidify control. This will basically be the only time I could do that. Yeah, let's get up into that new bracket for political power gain. Because, because remember, in Kaiserreich you have that 400 political power cap. So if you're not spending it, you're just wasting it. All right, these guys are going to take a little while to train up. Let's also move some things around. Okay, so as far as the armored divisions go, let's at least get these to 20. Ah, screw it. Let's make them all the way 40, at least for now. Okay. All the way. Okay, there we go. And we'll give them a recon company. Oh, wait a minute. Whoops. Yeah, here's what I really meant to do. We're going to duplicate that and then do that. So I still have my base one that I can mess with. All right, light tanks, light tanks. It's a big old 40 width light tanks. Okay. All right, got it. So this is what we actually want. We're gonna delete that. There we go. And we're gonna take the two of you and switch them over. Yeah, which which puts us at a bit of a disadvantage. And you know what, what I might actually do, we got the Silver Legion coming. All right, check this out. We're going to, will the Chrysler thing work? I always forget about if they fix that bug or not with the companies. Yeah, no, never mind, never mind. We're just gonna leave that be. All right, so we got these as 20 widths. Engineers, recon companies also need to be in there. Terrific. Okay, what's this infantry division look like? It's just a plain old, we can just delete that. Um, what do we got here? Motorized, six battalions, motorized, five battalions. <clears throat> Whatever, uh, you know, I might, I might find some use for them later. Okay, William Hood Sampson is also ready to get some sort of upgrade, but no. Now, I want to think about, in the long term, who my other field marshal is going to be, because eventually I just want Patton to have tanks under him. So, for the person I might promote, it very well might be Matthew Ridgeway here. He's got excellent, excellent defense. And he's a skill level 5. Hood Samson's good, but Ridgeway basically just has everything he has but more. Oh, we integrated New England. That's going to cost me political power. Also, there should be another event coming up, which is going to just slam me uh, in regards to political power. 
So I gotta I gotta keep some money in the bank for that. Alright. Next up, absorb the clan. Uh, Hiram Wesley Evans has been officially inducted into the Silver Legion as a mass clan gathering in the capital today. His word carries weight in the KKK and will be essential to reel in the clan. We will also require that clansmen no longer conceal their faces in order to use the influence of members to the fullest extent. Syndicalists are slaughtering police. Animals! They're animals! God. Disgusting. All right, so how, how far on the hole are we in regards to all of our equipment? Artillery, it's going to take 1,300 days to fix. That does not sound right at all because I've only got two factories working on it. That's the way it goes. Uh, you know, it's a tough civil war to get out of. We just need to start moving up here towards partial mobilization, and we'll be okay. Uh, all right, Federalists are slaughtering the police. Damn. Yeah, we also need to start dealing with the traitors. That's hurting our war support, stability, factory output. It's hurting a lot of things. So I'm just trying to rush down here to the crackdown on traders. After that, I'm not so sure which direction I'm going to be going in. We could start rebuilding the country. We could kind of quickly join a faction. And I think I do. Let me actually talk about what my goal is for this campaign. So, of course, my goal is that we're going to enact all of Pelly's things, all of his... Where is it? Everything here, you know, down to America is born again. We're going to want to get reconstruction is over. Uh, and also, because as you're going to see, Pelly's all about welfare for the white man, but if that's going to work, somebody's got to do it, do the work right. And so who's going to do that work? Right here. A big old penal colony waiting to be taken, which obviously lets you know that I'm not going to be joining the right fact. So we will join whatever faction we can as long as we can get this in the spoils and then uh, then we'll probably leave them just use them use them and leave them what did Russia do Russia went with Kirill so I'm probably not allowed to join him join Russia okay um, yeah we're still okay we're up to 312 next we're gonna crack down on the traders we go. A group of stubborn clansmen that refuse to reveal their names have come to Pelly seeking exception. Our chief Pelly made an enlightened decision to this issue and has sent the clansmen into a secret service. With a portion of the clan still undercover, we will be able to seek out and eliminate those with reservations against us. All right, Black Belt Act. One of the more controversial acts that Pelly is proposing is to extend the 1899 Indian Appropriations Act into the African American community. The proposed Black Belt Act would make communities in the South with majority of African American populations into a reserved space with independent public services. At least on paper, the Silver Legion claims these areas will be administered by African Americans under the regime's jurisdiction, similar to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And yeah, it's really worked out well for the Indians. Uh, moreover, the act would strip citizenship and any previous Commonwealth uh, to citizenship or something to African Americans nationwide. However, there comes even from our loyal members murmurs that, a, a, that whites within the Black Belt would also lose their right. What shall become of this act? So we're gonna, we can say not now and get some stability, or we can say autonomy now, autonomy forever. So that's obviously a reference to George Wallace the, in his speech over here in Alabama where he's going on about how much he loves the Confederacy. You know, that's something you always want to hear from a politician in your country about how much they loved the, uh, the secessionist movement uh, that your country produced. Uh, oh, yeah, we're still working on land warfare, but, you know, he says he uses all that fancy, you know, southern language, and he says, uh, so I, I hurl, I take off my glove and hurl it at the feet of tyranny, and I say, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. Uh, very famous speech. All right, so we need, we still need a bit of more war support. I forget, are the terrorists hurting my war support? Yes, they are. Okay, so we'll just, as soon as we can, we'll just clap a couple of those guys in jail, kill them, and get our, get our war support up. Our stability is also rising. We're still at minus seven. There's a lot of things. It's going to take a little bit of recovery. We, uh, we're probably not going to be recovered until probably, mm, I want to say late 19, not late 1940, but I say by 1940, it's going to take that long for us to uh, you know, properly fix ourselves, un-F ourselves. 
In the meantime, can I start justifying on people? Ho ho ho! What have we here? Mmm, Cuba and that tasty, tasty, tasty chromium is ripe for the taking. How many divisions they got? In Habana. You know what? I think we've I think we found something for us to do while we wait. And it'll eat up some political power. So, you know, let's uh let's go ahead and get working on a plan to liberate Cuba until we take Middle Africa. We need the labor's got to come from somewhere, you know. <laughs> uh, Patagonian workers front has capitulated. All right, we can now crack down on the traders. We're going to immediately get to work on that, fight the Federalists like so. Uh, we also have... Oh, wait, wait, we don't have more war support yet. Now, what can give us some quick war support? There's five here. The Christian Commonwealth. This one just sucks. only gives you two factories. So what we need is we need war support. This is just going to open up decisions, but I can come down here and get political power and war support. Hmm. We also got to rebuild the country at some point. We're approaching 1939, so we're going to get two research bonuses to industry here. There's also another couple here. Yeah, Christian work ethic. So between those two things combined, we can start running through our industry tree pretty quick. Uh, but we're not even in 1939 to get that stuff. So I want to wait until I'm getting the 1939 era technology before I start to actually rebuild the country. So instead... Because I also want to rush down to America's Reborn Again as quickly as I can. All right, this gives stability. There's nothing here that gives war support. I need war support for my industry. So since that's the case, I think we're going to come down to the new diplomatic corps as quickly as we can. Although, let's see, this is going to take 100 days. Is there anything else in 100 days that's going to help me that much? This gives me 5% war support. But that's it. One, two... That's economy stuff, one, two. Oh, here we go, this is 10% war support. I do need to come down to segregation forever, it, eventually. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. But I'm not getting political power when I do this. So, yeah, let's, let's get down to Amer let's come down to the new diplomatic corps. We'll do Diplomatic Corps and then probably go over to Segregation Forever. Now, I'm waiting for a certain event pop-up regarding Peli. Yeah, it's a rainbow China out there. Okay. Now, meanwhile, how are these tanks doing? Federalists are still slaughtering the police. These terrorists can't keep getting away with it. All right, we're three months away on the artillery. No, no, on the, on the infantry, the artillery we're over a year away on. I think we just need to stop training. Okay. So let's let's get you guys down here. Like so. Just as quickly as we can. And then what I'm probably gonna do is maybe I'll move a couple of them back up here to Miami to do a naval invasion. When is this gonna be good to go? April eleventh? Okay, so we got time. So we're gonna we're gonna try to push them from Cuba over here. And uh, from from Guantanamo Bay, we're gonna try to head west, but I might also just drop somebody, uh, drop a couple of divisions here to cut off people in the east. And as long as we take Santiago de Cuba quickly, it shouldn't be any problem. All right, industry stuff. You know what? There's the ahead of time penalty, but I think it's worth it because we gotta we gotta get moving on this penal act. Well, first off. Alashor Dodge just joined the Russian alliance. That's not something you see every day. Okay, the, the 13th Amendment made slavery illegal throughout the country. However, the amendment allows for involuntary servitude as a punishment for crime. A new order passed by the Shell Congress has increased the sentence time for moral crimes and provide moral crimes, what, like the Mann Act of 1910, and provided more use of indentured labor in industry, thus being named the Penal Act. The penal labor has been given boost by various black codes that criminalize attempting to vote as an Ameri African American. The boisterous speeches Pelly delivers on the radio have tried to obfuscate the unfolding truth that slavery is back. Do your time. Right, we, we've got so much political power, and that's great, but it's 
there's supposed to be a Peli event popping up that's going to take it away from me. Or take a lot away from me, I should say. So, want to want to get this done. How are we doing on supply? Are we okay with this many divisions here? Apparently. Okay, well then, maybe I won't do the naval invasions after all. <clears throat> Alright, America Abroad is done. So, I'm not seeing anything as far as... Uh, hmm... Getting getting uh, rid of getting rid of this political power. I'm not seeing any event pop-ups yet. So what I think I need to do, see this is 23 days away. <sighs> we can also join the Entente now. Who, who incidentally, are they involved in any wars? No. See, it could be cool, go help them out in India, but we'll wait. You help them in India, like just basically help them in all those little wars they're gonna be fighting, cause like there's gonna be the war in India. The African tribes are gonna rise up over there in Africa help them with all those little things but I guess we'll do that after we absorb Cuba um, <clears throat> oh, pardon me so let's grab Jim Crow America so what does this do the way of life in the South that the Northerner Pelly found that in segre that of segregation in states' laws that prevented blacks from exercising civil rights struck Pelly as the true soul of America. Finally, with total control and the world to gain by acting, Pelly has begun to suggest Northern states pass Jim Crow laws of their own. Oh, spooky. All right. So we could, obviously we're not going to join Germany, and we can't join the Russians. They, yeah, they would have needed Savinkov. Okay, the third great migration. Those thousands of African Americans that left America before the Civil War are being joined by hundreds of thousands more fleeing Pelly's terror. Achoo! Whoa, pardon me. Groups like the International Labor Defense and the NAACP are now working together with the Red Cross to evacuate the masses of people struggling to remain free. To the Silver Legion and their leaders, this plays into a long-standing fear of a united front against their rule. At the same time, the future dissidents internally, um, the safer loyal legionnaires can sleep. The question is, what shall we do? Shall we let them leave, or shall we keep them here? We can say they're ex we're expelling co toxins. Migration is minus 50% monthly population for three months. I'll also lose 5,000 manpower, but I'll get war support and stability. Or we could say quick stop them, uh, which loses me war support and stability. But the monthly population hits won't be so bad. I'm also gonna... Wait, why does my decryption go down? For 50 days. Uh... It's not like I have a lot of manpower to spare, but... I could use the war support. Yeah, plus 2% gets me into a higher echelon. Although, what's more in character? The question is, what should we do, or should we keep them here? See, you know, I don't want them working together. I don't want them thinking they could get away with stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna stop them, even though it hurts me. All right. So in April, that's gonna happen. What's going on over here in India? I really hope they go after the Princely Federation first. I do not want to be slogging through the Bharatiya Commune this early in the game. It's all those mountains. Ugh. Disgusting. Alright, we got the better artillery ready to go. And I will just go ahead and upgrade it, even though we don't have this full yet. Alright, next. What is next on the agenda? We could do concentration principle, but no. We gotta focus on our industry. Some more. Because like I said, once I'm done with all the 1939 era technologies, that's when I'll start doing the industry stuff. Okay. I'm still waiting on that Peli event. I'm starting to get a little nervous about it. NAACP declares the government illegitimate. Oh, what's this? In the wake of the devastating civil war, the future of African American rights fought for so long is again uh, fought so long for is again threatened. Initial assurances of civil protection by Huey Long kept many from the streets as socialists and federalists roiled. There were even planned meetings in New York City for Huey Long to directly address civil rights concerns before that fateful day. Now with Huey Long gone, all illusions of safety are dead. 
Walter Francis White, along with several high-ranking members of the NAACP, have declared the new America illegitimate. Many of them now prepare to immigrate to Canada and to other countries, as Marcus Garvey did, and so many others did during slavery. So be it. All right, hey, we got more stability out of it. Cool. Uh, so <laughs> that brings us all the way up to negative 0%. Hiram Wesley Evans. Where's he? Oh, it's my head of government. He's hurting my stability even more. So with all my modifiers that I've got, we're at, whoops, wait a second. We've got 50, 10, 10, 70. We've got minus 77% stability right now when you combine all the factors. <sighs> How annoying. But we're only one day away from finishing up this round of dealing with the terrorists. And we're about to do, do the Jim Crow's America, which is going to let me build stuff faster. Actually, we finally do have some open factories. So first thing I want to do is we got to let's build up the infrastructure in our capital and the surrounding states. All right. Revive nativism. I think that's, uh, that's going to be the way to go. So I can finally also start moving up to at least early mobilization. Yeah. And in about three months... We should be at war in Cuba. All right, the foundations of America, as Pelly and Armstrong see it, are connected not only to the former nation of Britain, but to Anglo-Saxons as a race. An executive act by Pelly has illegalized, uh, wouldn't, what, wouldn't a better phrase be made illegal, uh, interracial marriage requiring all marriages to occur in Christian identity churches, and the Silver Legion itself has been deployed to resegregate schools. Oh, the times there are changing. Okay, delete that. Okay, we got the two of you here. Let's bring you down here to Cuba. As soon as possible. Uh, we do have our marine divisions here. Do I have the infantry equipment, though? No. We're still a bit short. Uh, infantry, artillery's still going to take almost a year, but we're only a couple days away on the infantry equipment. So maybe I could just train these marines here. They don't have any support stuff in there, right? <coughs> I don't know if we'll be able to get them out in time, though, before... Uh, before the war begins. Right, another round done of... Okay, we're down to strong federalists and socialist supporters, but so before I end it, let me show you just how the localization has changed. Our initial counterterrorism efforts are showing some promise, but these socialist-resistant groups are tough nuts to crack. Some peripheral terrorists have been arrested and a few safe houses raided, but this has had little impact. See, I love those kind of little details. Now, jeez, oh, this chaffy is taking forever. I think I might pick up the Chrysler. It's helping a bit. Okay, anyway, thank you for joining me. In the next episode, we should be going to war in Cuba, and then, of course, the war in Europe is going to break out soon. We are probably going to join the Entente so that afterwards I can take Africa as is, uh, is part of the deal. And... Yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll just kind of have to see how it plays out. I'm also still waiting, like I've been saying repeatedly, I'm waiting for an event that pops up for Peli that costs me 150 political power, which is why I've been continuously saving up so much. Maybe I have to take a certain focus before it triggers. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.